Aloha. Welcome everyone to our 11 a.m. service of Holy Communion here for this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. And uh, we will be using setting two today. And uh, it was, I think we're getting a little better at it. So, so good. And then um, uh, also uh, we have some newer hymns that we're trying out. So uh, uh, listen closely as we go along. And, and uh, especially this, the last hymn, I'll explain to you how we sing it. Uh, when we get to that point. That's enough for the announcements on the liturgy itself. I invite you to stand now as you are able, and we will begin with the confession and the forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation. Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We'll pause for a moment of silent reflection. together. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And we continue with the gathering song, All Who Hunger Gather Gladly.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. be with you. A poule, kako. Let us pray. O oh God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son, that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. A reading, a reading from Proverbs. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in reading responsibly Psalm 112. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. Wealth and riches will be in their house. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. 
It is good for them to be generous in lending. For they will never be shaken. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is established and will not shrink. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. A reading from Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourself were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all and let, marriage, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is, that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to Luke. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also, he said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, 
and uh, we're going to go. We're going to go back to something we haven't done for a while, and that's going to. I'm invite Keiki. Why don't you come on down front here? Come on, right down there. I'll be right back. Let's see how we do this. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> yeah, it's been about three years since I sat down there like that. Okay, let's see if I can get up. Good to see you guys. All right, Ju Juliana? No, huh? Janelle. Ju okay, I'll practice it. I'll work at it. Let let me let me tell you a story. And uh, I, I, the first service, I told it in the sermon, but I want to tell you this story. It is it is called Ubuntu. Has anybody ever heard the word Ubuntu? Yes, I haven't used it for a while, but it is uh, an African word. Somebody said after the service, it might be Swahili, but it, it is an African uh, a word. And uh, it means I am because we are. And by in, in, uh, implication, we are because I am, you am, you am, you am, you am, okay? So we're all unique, beloved individuals of God together. Ubuntu. Once upon a time, there was a, an American researcher who went to East Africa to study community for his thesis, his, his dissertation. And he was trying to understand this word Ubuntu and he couldn't seem to get it. Finally, his work was done. So he's waiting for the plane and the little village is gonna land in the field. But before it gets there, he has all this uh, uh, sweet fruit that he can't take with him. So he called all the kids of the village together and they all came and there's more kids than sweet fruit. But he put it down at the other end of the field and he said, I'll tell you what, everybody line up and when I say go, you run out there and grab that sweet fruit. Whoever gets there first can have it. And the kids said, yay, yay, okay, all right, we'll go for it. He said, get ready, get set, go. And you know what happened? Instead of each of them running by themselves, they all joined hands and they hopped and skipped and laughed their way down to the, the sweet fruit together. And the older kids picked up the sweet fruit and broke it up and gave it to all the younger kids. So everybody, in the end, everybody won. How's that sound? Then the researcher finally understood what Ubuntu meant. And he and the kids in the village and everyone else there lived joyfully ever after. Okay. And now we're going to, I should probably get my pick. I haven't done this since probably 2019, so. I'm just up here so I have a mic, but you guys are gonna follow me, okay? So pastor's gonna sing first. It's a call and response type song for most of it. Sometimes we sing with him. It's okay. You're not going to get it the first time, but he's going to sing a part and we're going to sing the same part almost like right after him. So you guys just follow me. Okay. Okay. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up higher and higher, and He shall lift you up. Let's do that again. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. 
Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up higher and higher, and he shall lift you up. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. How'd that go, okay? All right. Well, I'll keep practicing, and you keep, you, and I'll come up, and we'll try it some more, all right? Okay, thanks for coming up. This is today a feast day or a commemoration day. We don't really do feast days, but a commemoration day for St. Augustine of Hippo, who died in 432. He was, uh, uh, when he was growing up, he was a wild boy. And uh, then uh, his mother, Monica, and St. Ambrose, the Bishop of Milan, uh, somehow got, uh, he converted to Christianity. He became a very great theologian, thinker, Bishop of Hippo in North Africa, uh, where he died during a, a, a siege uh, by, uh, I think it was European barbarians who had come down through Africa and, and uh, uh, were laying siege to Hippo. But he wrote a lot of theological books. He wrote the Confessions of St. Augustine, in which he had a couple famous phrases. One was, our hearts are restless until they rest in thee, O God. And the other one was uh, one that many of us are familiar with, the just shall live by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And then there's another uh, uh, saint that I've not heard much about, not as much as known about him, uh, Saint Moses the Black. I thought, why? That doesn't sound right in today's society, but that's what he went, went by. He was an Ethiopian convert. He had been a bandit and a thief. He converted to Christianity. And instead of becoming a bishop, he became a monk in a place called Skeet. And he was instrumental in spreading the gospel about all through East Africa, long, long uh, before even the Reformation. He died in about 40, 432 in the Christian era. So we remember these two who were very different, but were reputedly very humble, which goes with the theme today of our scripture readings. Humility. I thought, humility. That's not a word I use a lot myself. Hmm, maybe I should. Humility. I looked it up. Dictionary.com, you know, grab that app, you look it up. And it says, as a definition, humility is a quality of being humble. That wasn't a big help. All right, thank you, dictionary.com. So I scratched my head and I said, let's start with the way, uh, almost the scientific method. We start, what is this not? Well, what humility is not, I'm pretty sure, is success at all costs. Numbers, profits, metrics, right? It's not promoting myself or even ourselves as a group alone. It's not self-promotion, which is tough, right? Since our culture is all about 
self-promotion. Now we have social influencers on social media, right? Promoting themselves or something. And then there's the one that's almost in our lesson where it says, sit down low so that you can get up high, which sounds almost hypocritical, right? A, a, a humility that is designed to get me noticed. And then the opposite of self-promotion is probably, I am nothing. I am nothing. Well, there's a contradiction there. If you are nothing, if you are of no value, how can you value your neighbor that God calls us to love and serve? Humble. I looked that word up. You know, humility is a quality of being humble. I looked humble up. That didn't help. More, ne more negations. Humble. Not proud. Not arrogant. Oh, great. Well, I said maybe modest. All right. Low in rank, importance, status, quality. And I sat back through the week and I said, maybe what we have to recognize is that this is a complex concept. It's not easy. What is humility? And I went back through the lessons in the bulletin there, read through them some more, and I pulled out a few other words. Wisdom from that short first reading. Love, let mutual love continue. Hospitality, courage, where it says no fear. Leadership. I thought about those words and said, you know what? All those words are relational words. Relations is what hum humility may be about. How I am with others, how they are with me, how we are with us. And then I got to thinking about how I, I don't really think of humanity anymore as homo sapiens, right? Wise humanity, not after the last few years at least, right? Kooky humanity maybe, but not wise, but what? You know, anthropologists, social researchers, and, and whatnot say, uh, and even some theologians say, what is it that makes us human? What is it that makes us special? Some people say it's the thumb. When we developed the thumb, we were able to develop tools and develop society, move from hunter gatherer to farming, settled, agricultural community. No, it's not quite thumbs. Pastor Keith, who likes to preach the word, likes the phrase speaking humanity, homoloquens. Sometimes homoloquens, chattering humanity. Ever have one of those days where everything's chatter? But speaking humanity, let's just go with that. Speaking humanity. In our speaking, we enable and constrain each other. We lift each other up and we can tear each other down. You know what that is? When that works, that's power. Power is not a thing that you accumulate. Power is a relationship you have with others where you enable that which is good and right and desirable and you constrain that which is evil and wrong and undesirable. The question becomes then, how do we exercise power humbly? How do we enable each other? How do we constrain each other? Which means everything we say and do has an ethical and moral dimension. And as I said, it's hard to be humble in a world that promotes me, 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 win at all costs, right? And we are trapped and in bondage to the demand to play the game of me, 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 or suffer the consequences. But if the pandemic, the culture wars, the climate catastrophe, 
has told us anything, has, has shown us anything. Maybe it has to do with humility. Perhaps in our pride, our modernist pride, I can predict, control, and manage my life. Perhaps in our pride, individual, social, global, God is humbling us. God is taking us down a notch or two. Now, I want to be careful about saying that because I'm not sure God, who God would be taking down at that point, because it seems like the rich have gotten richer in the pandemic and the poor have gotten poorer and the elderly people in nursing homes, people of color, women have suffered the most. So I say that with a certain amount of caution. Humility. I told that story of Ubuntu because I think it says something about how humbly those young kids worked together with each other. And in doing that, they exhibited the values of the reign of God. Three, the three great values, equal regard for everyone, not just people like me, but especially the ones not like me. Equal regard. Mutual affection. Let love continue, says to the writer, says the writer of the Hebrews. And finally, the value of self-sacrificial love, the way of the cross, the way of Jesus, who humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. We sing that every Lenten season. Yes. Maybe humility has something to do with living out the reign, the rule, the love of God. Let me say this again. Each and every one of us are unique, beloved individuals in the social world, family, school, work, military, church. We are unique and we are beloved just as we are. And so, Ubuntu. Yesterday, here at the church, uh, a, a bunch of us came together and stained the fence that got built a couple of years ago, but that, that we couldn't get stained because we couldn't all stand next to each other with those masks on in the hot sun and paint, right? And it's like, we didn't all want to just, so I thought, well, we'll just stay with the fence. And, right, and, and, and then a whole bunch of us turned out yesterday. Some started, some finished, some went the length, some passed out in the sun halfway through, right? And it's the way we go. And, it, oh. and, and uh, I thought, well, whatever we get done, we get done, right? And oh, my goodness, we got it almost all done. And we would have had it all done if we hadn't had that lousy, the old, we used the old, we ran out of the new stain, we tried the old stain and the sprayer clogged up, right? Oh, well, we'll get this. But we got all of it. And you know what I kept thinking the whole thing was Ubuntu. I'm in this because we're in this and y'all are in it. And, and I looked around at how you all were talking to each other. You weren't just painting. I've, I got a picture of you and Anna, you know, you know, uh, that's going on social media. All right. We're going to promote those two. All right. But we do that in the context of community. Equal regard, mutual affection, self-sacrificial love. And was just staining the fence. But boy, it brought the people out. And they had a good time. And some of you brought a lot of food. And as while we worked, I'm sure I put on five pounds. That's Ubuntu. That's church. That's community. That, I think, is where humility is found. Humility, the way of the cross. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he will raise you up. That, my friends, I think is the heart of our faith, the heart of grace, and what the cross and resurrection are all about. Amen.
And for the uh, hymn of the day, we'll sing all four verses of hymn 546 in your bulletin to be your presence. <laughs> good. I invite you now to stand as you are able and join me in confessing humbly yet boldly our faith in the triune God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. For the church and its leaders, we pray, uphold all deacons, pastors, and bishops who serve and teach your people, especially Bishop Liz Eaton, Bishop Dave Nagler, and the pastors of Christ Lutheran Church, Dale, AJ, Mark, and Keith. Awaken in your church a spirit of invitation that reaches ever outward. E kahaku. Aloha, keakua. For the well-being of creation and its inhabitants, we pray. Stir in us reverent awe for the beauty of the natural world, for oceans and lakes, rivers and streams, forests and deserts, the Pacific Ocean, and the many forest reserves of Hawaii Ne. E kahaku. Aloha, Keakua. For the nations and people of the world, we pray, sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equity for all. Defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees and all who are persecuted for their ethnic origin or religious be beliefs. E kahaku. Aloha, Keakua. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, we pray, be present with those who live in isolation or fear, especially those who are incarcerated or detained. Comfort all who are sick or grieving, especially all those whom we name in our hearts and whose names we now speak aloud. For the families of Keala Benz, Frank Vidmer, Mark Otto, 
Paul, Teresa, and Robert Striffler Sr. For all those suffering from long COVID. For Anita, Casey, Father David, Dick, Janet, Joe, Jessica, Kathy, Mary, Michael, Hattie, Naomi, Peggy, Sally, Tajan, Uncle Keith, and Yvonne. E Kahaku. Aloha, Keakua. For this congregation, Christ Lutheran Church, and its ministries, as we emerge from the coronavirus pandemic, we pray. Prepare children, youth, and adults for new ways of learning the faith. Embolden our witness to invite others to the table. E Kahaku. Aloha, Keakua. For those who are celebrating birthdays this week, for those who are remembering their baptismal anniversaries, especially Gary and Sally, may their days be full of laughter and life and joy. E kahaku. Aloha, keakua. For the communion of saints in Kailua, known as St. John Lutheran Church, and their pastor, Catherine Zerker, may they be faithful and bold witnesses to the gospel of Jesus. E kahaku. Aloha, Keakua. For all the saints who confessed God's name, especially St. Augustine, Bishop of Hippo, and Moses the Black, we give thanks. May we cling to the promise of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. E Kahaku. Aloha, Keakua. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. Just a word, I haven't done this for a while, but just a word about why we use Hawaiian in our uh, uh, liturgy. This is a gift from a kahu, a kupuna, uh, an Episcopal priest, a uh, member of the Royal Order of Kamehameha, uh, a friend of mine who said to me, Keith, here, take this Hawaiian. It is a gift. Use it in honor of the culture that hosts. And so that's why we uh, use the Hawaiian. It's not tourist Hawaiian. Uh, it's real Hawaiian. And uh, between uh, Father John and Pua, they keep my uh, uh, syllables working, right? So thank you for that. That being said, Aloha nui e oko. Oke aloha. O ka haku e mau ana meako. A pau loa. Friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters, the peace of Christ be with you always. And you know whom you can hug and whom you can wave to. And you, you may be seated. And uh, we, somebody said, where's the offering? It says offering. We don't pass the plate just for hygienic reasons. Uh, there are different ways to make an offering. Uh, if you're visiting for the first, second, or third time, uh, the bread and wine are on us. All right. So uh, uh, you can uh, just come forward freely and joyous, joyously. Uh, Emily, would you lead us in the doxology in English and then Hawaiian as I continue to prepare the table? <laughs>
e pule kako. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Please stand as you are able for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Namakana akeakua, nokapoe akeakua. The gifts of God for the people of God. E komomai, e kipamai. Come, all is ready, and you are welcome. <laughs> Elaine, the body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Liza, the body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Adeline, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. 
Kathy and Andrea, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Eileen, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Sarah, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Ethan, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Logan, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Chieko, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Becky and Zella, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Hagen, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Henry and Ritter, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Andrew, the body of Christ is broken for you. Pua. The blood of Christ is shed for you, Andrew. The blood of body of Christ is broken for you, Pua. The blood of Christ is shed for you. And Jana, Eli, and girls. The body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Jean, the body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. And Emily, the body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. And for those of you who are worshiping with us online, if you have, uh, bread and wine at hand or something reasonably close, you may take it up now. If you have nothing with you like bread or wine, you can still commune with this community of faith, Christ Lutheran Church, and with Jesus by accepting these words in faith. The body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. E pule kako, let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And announcements. Again, thank, thank you everybody who came out and stained the fence. Uh, we'll let you know when we're gonna try and finish it off. It might just take only a few of us. Uh, also the anti-racism, uh, I think it's a Zoom, uh, is continuing on Wednesdays from four to 6 p.m. It's part of the Pacific Synod, the, the district, Southern California and Hawaii for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And you can uh, email Terry Robertson at uh, her email there or that phone or the phone number if you would like to be part of that anti-racism uh, 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 study. Also coming in a, a few Saturdays is uh, the Hukilau Assembly, which is all of the ELCA Lutheran churches from around Hawaii. And they're gonna be here. And one of the reasons they're coming here is because we can roll the walls back and it's, it's pretty safe. The other one is they made me the Dean and I got to pick the place to go. So there you have it. I didn't want to do anything more than walk down the driveway for that thing. So here we are. Uh, we may need somehow, we're going to order pan, you know, we're going to go to Milani restaurant or someplace and get the pan fried, you know, the big pans of food. But we may need some help with setup and takedown and all that. We will be having a communion service. So uh, to start it, 
So it's the first time we're meeting together since uh, the before times. Okay, uh, also coming in September is Give Aloha at Foodland, where you can donate up to um, $249 and however much is donated to Christ Lutheran Church at 77769, our code they'll ask you for, uh, uh, they will match that. So we can, uh, it's been very popular lately, but it, we, you know, it's a, it's a way to raise a little extra money. So if you'd like to be part of that, feel free. Uh, two other things. Uh, many of you know that uh, uh, Carolyn is going to be leaving soon. Uh, yeah, she's not entirely leaving, but she's leaving as parish administrator. I asked her January of 2020, I said, would, would you mind being an interim parish administrator for a couple months? Well, that was 27 months ago. And she says, I want to retire. She says, so uh, we're going to let her retire. We've hired somebody else that I know and, and is incredibly competent. Uh, her name is uh, uh, Shelby Yu, and she'll be starting Wednesday. So pray for her and, uh, uh, and, and give thanks for Carolyn. Sometime in October, we're going to get her that gift card. So you still have time to make a donation for that. And um, uh, we're going to try and get her here maybe on the third Sunday of October, because in the final announcement is that we had such a great time with the potluck at Pastor Dale's anniversary of his ordination that the council said, let's do a third Sunday of the month potluck every month. So between services from about 9.15 to 10.30 or so, we're going to have food out here. And even if you don't bring any food, come because there'll be plenty left over. All right. So we'll remind you of that. We're going to try and get Carolyn here for that, that day. Um, it depends upon if the uh, San Francisco Giants are playing on TV or not, is what I was told. So, so we'll see how that goes. But we're going to get here back in October to thank her. Are there any other announcements? Andrea? Oh, you could stream it on the big... Oh, we could have her Zoom from home? Oh, oh you could put the Giants up here. Yeah, okay, so there's no excuse. I'll tell her that. All right. Oh, pray for me. <laughs> Any other announcements? Oh, as always, if you would like to step up and help with something, the AV, uh, we really have one more slot we could put people in. Uh, setting up, taking down, we'd really appreciate it. So all of you, uh, keep that in mind. Thank you to all of you. I mean, I look around the room and so many of you are, are doing things. So thank you. Mahalo nui lo. Please stand as you're able for the blessing and the sending song. Now, the God of peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. This sending song is a new song for us, too, and uh, uh, it's uh, Lord, now send us forth, and we are going to sing the first verses in English, and we'll repeat the first half of it, then we'll repeat the second half in English. Becky's going to lead us, so come on up, Becky, and then we'll do it in Spanish, first half, second half, okay? Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Um, yeah, it went okay at the last service, so we'll, let's give it a try. Emily, if you would, please. Thank you. 
Go in peace.